Hi, and welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. This, of course, is our tech-related Q&A session. If you've got any questions about problems you're having with your bike or perhaps things you want to do to your bike, let us know. Uh, in the comments underneath, use the hashtag Ask GMBN Tech, or you can always drop us an old-fashioned email to hellotech at gmbn.com. Uh, right, first up this week is coming from Chris Wright. Hi there, I've got an On1 456 Carbon Evo running on 26 inch wheels. I'm thinking of fitting a 27 and a half inch fork and wheels as his bags of clearance on the seat and chain stays. Would this work or would it wreck the geometry? Um, all right, so it will definitely work. I've done this very thing to my daily bike that I've turned into a commuter but there's a few things you need to remember with this. So you do say there's a lot of clearance in there, which is fine. So the wheel is gonna fit in the back. We'll talk about the back because you're suggesting putting a 27 and a half inch fork on, so that is no problem with clearance. The first thing it's gonna do is bump up your bottom bracket. Quite a lot more than you think as well, and you're really gonna notice that, especially if you don't use a dropper post too much. Let's just say you're coming up to some traffic lights and you wanna put your foot down, you're gonna to have to get off the saddle because it's gonna be high enough you're not gonna be able to reach the floor on your toes. Now I noticed this on my commuter bike, that I was running 26 by 2.4, and now I'm running a 650 with 42 millimeter tires on there. So they're effectively only a tiny bit bigger with those little tires than my 26s, but I can notice it with those. So just think, if I was running a 20, uh, 2.4 inch tire on there, um, wouldn't have a chance of touching the floor properly. So just take that into account. If you're running a dropper post, might not be a concern. Uh, the benefit of having a high BB is you're never gonna hit your cranks when you're off-road. The downside is it's not gonna feel, you're gonna feel quite top heavy. You're not gonna feel as uh, secure and comfortable when you're cornering. You're not gonna feel in the bike. You're gonna feel very much perched on the bike. If you can cope with that, no problem, give it a whirl. Um, the other thing you need to take into account is your chainstay length is gonna feel a lot shorter. Uh, with your 26 inch wheel in there, um, the chainstay length is designed around that size wheel. So as soon as you put a bigger wheel in there, you're gonna have more weight bias to the rear of the bike. It's gonna feel easier to manual, which might be a nice trade-off, but it also can wreak a bit of havoc. So you might need to counter the way that feels by lowering your stem on the bike or maybe fitting a lower bar, something like that. All stuff you'll have to play with, and it does affect different bikes in different ways. But yes, the answer is you can affect it. You're not gonna wreck your bike completely, but you are gonna feel higher up, which can affect things a little bit. All right, next one is from Leo Likes Bikes. Good name. Um, everyone is all about super long frames, as long as you can get away with it. But I'm concerned my bike might be too long for me. Now that's something that don't hear very often. I'm 5'11 and I usually ride a size large. My dream bike has always been a Mondraker June, and I finally spotted one secondhand that I could afford, so I snapped it up. Problem is, the bike's not only a Mondraker, which has forward geometry, so it's a longer front end anyway, um, but it's an XL2, which has a 515 millimeter reach. I'm finding it's an extremely capable bike that just begs me to go faster on rough ground. It's a rocket ship in a straight line and has made me more comfortable in the air too. But I seem to have lost all cornering skill. I'm forever washing out the front wheel and not simply being able to turn in time. Um, due to high speed interfacing with trees, I'm currently on my third helmet this year. Any thoughts? Okay, yeah, so there is a few things you can do on this. So um, basically you're struggling to weight the front wheel is what the problem is. So there are a number of things you can do, but they do have an opposite reaction. So you have to bear in mind um, with a longer bike, all these sort of things. So if you went for a lower stem and a lower cockpit position, you're gonna put more weight on the front wheel, which is a good thing to do because it's naturally gonna put you further over the front of the bike and it's gonna help you weight that front end to give you a bit more of a balanced ride. The downside of that is you're gonna find it a lot harder to pick that front end up. So what I used to do on my Mondraker Junes in the past was I used to run a high stem on there and a high bar setup. So I had a 30 mil stem with a like a 38 mil rise bar, nice and high, and I'd put the longer chainstay chip in there. So by putting the longer chainstay chip in it, you put more weight on that front wheel, but it made the bike harder to manual and pick up the front end, but by having the high bar in there, you'd kind of counter that. Um, that worked for me, and I found that my position was really neutral most of the time. All right, so you're gonna slide out here and they're doing stuff, but you got used to the bike. Um, and I, I love the way the bike handled like that, so that might be something you could try. Um, you could also roll the bars forwards because that will naturally put your elbows out in a more of an attack sort of stance, it tends to put you forward on the bike. Um, other than playing with that, to be honest, um, I do think it might be on the large size for you. Um, but try those things. Um, 
And even if you don't have access to those bars, one of your friends is quite likely to have a higher bar. So definitely try that. And hopefully your bike came with those chainstay chips. Um, they do come with them as stock, but if you got your second hand, the, whoever you bought it off might not have supplied those bits. Um, you can get them, no problem, food distributors as spare parts. So um, I would suggest experimenting with those things. Making it longer actually will give you more control um, on that front end of the bike. So it balances things out a little bit more. Um, you don't want to be riding over the back of the bike. You want to be hanging on the front of the bike. That's the whole point of having that long front end. You don't have to be afraid of riding into stuff. Um, I hope, hope you get it worked out. Um, let us know in the comments uh, what you do sort out and we'll try and help you more. Right, Mark Bennett. I've just upgraded my brakes to Shimano Saint 4 pots with a 203mm Icetech rotor on the front. I can't stop the rotor from touching the pads. It's only slightly touching, but the noise is doing my head in. I've tried straightening the rotor, even taking it to a local bike mechanic to get it straightened. Um, I've tried pushing the pistons all the way in, no love. Um, but it's strange that the mechanic couldn't get it sorted because um, that's his job really. Um, all right, so there's quite a few things there could be here. So firstly, have they been bled correctly? If they're not bled properly, sometimes the pistons don't retract properly into the actual, uh, the caliper itself, and then it will be dragging. Um, so first stop is to make sure they're properly bled. Um, your pistons could be sticky. Even though you've said that's a new brake, from time to time you do get one that's put together without piston grease on there. Um, so just give, basically feel them by finger and see if they're actually freely moving. Um, hopefully they will be. Uh, we will make a video on overhauling a brake caliper and re-greasing the pistons and resetting those. Um, is the adapter the right one? Not all adapters are the same. Even if your adapter is for the correct road size, say a 203 or a 180 or 185, um, sometimes they do differ in thickness. So the brake caliper on the top has those alignment bolts, but they don't always allow enough movement if the actual brake caliper ad adapter sort of thing is a bit different. So check that. Uh, and also, just one thing to check, check the disc rotors on the right way round. Um, now, sometimes it can be easy to fit a rotor on around. And with the Icetech ones, the rotor is actually very slightly offset from that alloy spider that it sits on, enough to make it make noise. And I've seen this happen before where people have accidentally fitted them the wrong way around. At a glance, you wouldn't know. You'd be too busy trying to stop it from rubbing to acknowledge that. So just check that and hopefully you'll find, um, you'll be able to sort your problem out. Um, good luck, by the way. All right, next up's from Ethan Mudge. Hi guys, I've got a 2019 RockShox Yari on my Canyon Talk with 180mm travel. It's got two tokens in it and I weigh around 70 kilos. When I ride down averagely rough trails uh, with rocks, roots, jumps and drops, I'm only using a half to two thirds of my travel. I'm running about 85 PSI with 27% sag, which is recommended. Um, I want to make use of all my travel, but I don't want the bike to feel unsupported with lower pressures in the fork. That would be very plush. Should I remove some tokens or lower the pressure? Well, it's kind of a bit of both, really. you kind of got to experiment with this. Um, what you're aiming for on a ride like that, you want to be using all of your travel um, at least once, really, on a ride like that. It doesn't mean a, a full bottom out. Um, I like to save sort of 5, 10 mil travel for those oh my god moments where you, you kind of run out of talent and you just go into something too hard. Um, try, try less pressure and try adding a bit of compression damping. So by, adding, by taking away a bit of pressure, you will use more of that fork travel, keep those volume spaces in there so it ramps up nicely. And by adding a bit of low speed compression, you will hide, you um, hold the fork up slightly. Uh, that's what my suggestion would be. Um, and I would go up to 30% sag, 3% um, more than your 27, but it will make a big difference in how it feels. Um, really, you just need to experiment a bit. Take a shock pump with you out on the trail and take note of what your settings are. Uh, and you will, I promise you, you will find the right setting. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, everyone's preferences are different for the way that you ride and the way you want the fork to feel as well. But definitely have a little play with the compression knob on your fork and that will hopefully sort your problems out. Okay, Robert Long. Um, on my bike, the chain keeps falling off on bumpy and rough terrain. The chain also keeps hitting the back of the spokes. Is there anything you can recommend upgrading or doing to solve this problem? Uh, well, firstly, check it off for wear. If it's really worn, then that might be why it's jumping off the chain ring or jumping off the sprockets at the back. And whilst you're at it, check your rear derailleur. Check the spring has got a decent amount of tension on it because as they get older, the springs get a bit baggy, they become a bit more wobbly, um, and your chain will rattle around a bit more. Um, if that stuff is all okay, um, then perhaps you want a narrow wide chainring on the front. That will certainly help. Um, but 
bear in mind that if your chain of cassette and stuff is worn, um, you might want to replace that and also at the same time do a chain ring. Uh, another option is to get a clutch derailleur on there. So clutch derailleurs effectively have a, a massive overpowering spring on the bottom to add tension to the chain to stop it coming off. If you have a clutch mech in combination with a narrow wire chain ring, it's really rare that you will lose a chain. Um, you could go for a chain guide as well. Even just an upper chain guide, a real simple one, uh, just like the one on the screen right now from MRP, or this one from E13, and there's loads of other ones on the market, cheaper options that look very similar. Mm, Threadlock related question from Ran Weisberg. I've just found out my rotor bolts were crazy loose after practicing some trials techniques. I'm running a 180 rear and 200 front with code brakes on my Canyon Torque. What type of Loctite would you recommend for this? Um, well, bearing in mind that Loctite is, um, it's a brand name. It's just um, a particular brand of Threadlock. So if you're using Loctite itself, go for 243. Um, it's a medium strength thread locker uh, and it's designed specifically for that sort of purpose to stop those bolts rattling loose. Um, if you're looking at say Park Tools, they make one. Um, the medium strength one is very similar to the same power as the 243. Um, so either one of those is gonna do quite well. What you don't wanna do is go for a stronger one. And the problem you have with a stronger one is that you will end up rounding those bolt heads out when you try and remove them. Uh, so definitely stick to the medium one um, and it's gonna do it just right. If you wanna know a bit more about thread locks, compounds, all that sort of stuff, where you should use them and the types you should be using, uh, I'm gonna throw a link to the video I made all about lubricants, compounds, thread locks, etc. And that's gonna be in the description below this video, so check that one out. Um, it's quite a long video there. Uh, there we go, there's another weekly Ask GMBN Tech in the back. If you've got any questions for us, let us know in the comments down there. Don't forget to use that hashtag, Ask GMBN Tech. For a couple more videos, click down here if you want to see my bike cave and click over here for Henry's Brake Hacks. Uh, plenty of cool stuff there to help you on your way with your brakes. Don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up if you like this video and you like what we do here at GMBN Tech. And when you subscribe, hit that little bell button there. That will make sure you get an alert pop up on your device every time we launch a new video video, which is going to be more regularly from now on.